progress with him because again, I think uh, I think what he's doing is very interesting on uh, on other fronts, and what he has exposed is a real need, a real hunger for a meaning-based conversation about you know you know how do you get your life straight in a you know in the 21st century. Um, and I mean, I mean, clearly, clearly, there's a hunger for wisdom that the secular community has not been answering in any kind of reliable way. And so-, so that's Sam Harris talking about Jordan Peterson and why he has been resonating so intensely of late. Why his popularity has seemed to skyrocket out of the blue because he's touching on something very important. He's touching on something that people are actually looking for. This is something that I've been talking about a lot too. A hunger for meaning, a yearning for meaning out there. Now, it's all well and good if you are an anti-theist. If you're an anti-theist and your your purported purpose, your purported agenda is to dismantle religion as you know it. This is fine and acceptable up to a point, but you need to recognize, you need to see the writing on the wall, you need to look into the future. And see, if you dismantle religion as we know it, you're going to have to replace it with something. You're going to have to replace it with something that's stable, socially cohesive, and important enough that people can ascribe meaning to it so they can live their lives according to it. And guess what? That sounds suspiciously like replacing it with religion. And if you put an ethical system inside of it, I'd hope it would be very similar to the ethical system of Christianity. What about all the mean stuff in the Bible? Never mind the mean stuff. Talk about the nice parts of Christianity. Emphasis on mercy. Emphasis on humility. If you're going to put an eth- ethical system inside your reconstructed religion. See, if you dismantle religion, look down the road. See the writing on the wall. You are going to need to replace it with something. Why? Because that's how humans are wired up. They need some form of social cohesion, some form of flag that they can rally around, something that they, to, that they can get behind that pro- provides real meaning in their life. Now, I had this conversation, I started this conversation last Saturday with three atheists, Godless Cranium, Shannon Q, and Drew of Genetically Modified Skeptic. Now, all three of them are capable of living uh, high-functioning, successful lives without any sense of intrinsic meaning. Why? Partially because of how they were raised, I would argue. Potentially, let's say. All three of them are very high-functioning, intelligent human beings who I would guess were raised in very loving and supportive families to one degree or another. Maybe not, but that's my guess. But regardless of that, as adults, they have enough internal resources. They are bringing enough to the table intrinsic in themselves that they might not need what religion provides. I'll, t- I'll accept that. I'll take them at their word, that they don't need that to live successful lives. They give meaning to themselves, and they can, you know, but they, they have a point and a purpose that they find satisfying. I buy that to some degree. My mother was very similar. You know, she was a, uh, she used to tell me all the time she gets so much value and meaning out of being a feminist. And yeah, as annoying as that sounds, as annoying as it was to live under, yeah, it sounds exactly as annoying as it was to grow up that way. It's exactly how it was. Um, but that's how she gave meaning and value to her life. All I'm trying to tell you is that those three are, are a higher order of human being. They're already on their way to high-functioning lives, and they're, they're relatively stable, and they have emotional inner resources to draw from. Move the, pop, move the discussion out to the general population at large, and you have a very different story. You have people who actually need emotional needs, powerful emotional needs, and religion is providing something for them. Yeah, it is. They're not just idiots. Religion is providing something really, really crucial and important in their life, and if you dismantle it, what are you going to replace it with? that's going to give them the same type of meaning. That's the only question I was trying to bring to the table that last Saturday. So that's, uh, that is one question at least worth considering. If you dismantle religion, that's your stated goal. Fine, excellent, but now you have millions of people out there who are going to be completely at sea. Maybe not you, and maybe not the high-functioning people who you hang out with. But you already have inner resources to bring to the table. I'm talking about the millions upon millions of people out there 
How are you, what are you going to rebuild to provide meaning in their life? Just something to think about. I'm not sure if it can be answered in one debate. I'm not sure it can be answered in one sitting. Wasn't necessarily trying to have anybody answer it. It's just something to think about. If you are an atheist and you are listening to this and you say, I, don't, I didn't need religion at all. Matter of fact, it was liberating for me to walk away from religion. That may be true in your case. But you, not, you might not be wired the same way a lot of other people are. This is what Sam Harris meant. Jordan Peterson is talking about meaning. Giving your life meaning, something that shapes your life, something that moves you forward in the morning, that is outside of you. That's the key. It isn't you, it's outside of you. And if you're going to say there's no God, so it can't be God, so it can't be religion, fine. But you're still going to need to replace that for most people, I would think. Maybe not. If you have a counter-argument, let's hear it. Maybe you don't. But that's what I'm telling you. It seems to me obvious that you, if you dismantle it, you're going to need to replace it with something. And that something is going to be, look suspiciously similar to Christianity. If it's going to be efficient, functional, and provide social cohesion, and it's going to provide meaning for people. Maybe you don't. I'm willing to listen. Tell me. You know? If you have a counter-argument, you say that there's not, that's not necessarily true, then let's hear it. Let's hear, let's hear what, how people can function without it and how society can hold together without it. Because that, at the end of the day, that is what Jordan Peterson is on about. When people ask you, what's this Jordan Peterson on about? That's what he's on about all the time. Even though he's not necessarily a Christian, he doesn't really believe in Jesus the same way I believe in Jesus. He's not a Christian the same way I am. I've heard him talk about it. He's not. That's one of the reasons why he gets kind of hedgy and hemmy and hawy when the subject comes up. Because he doesn't really fully know how to answer the question. Why? He didn't have a faith-based experience. I did. That's different. We're different that way. He's just a defender of religion as a societal thing, which is different. But that's why he bristles at the concept of dismantling religion, because he can see the future. You're going to need to replace it with something. You're going to re need to replace it with something that emph emphasizes ethics just as stringently as Christianity and gives people a reason to follow those ethics. Yeah, tra trash Christians for saying, if you don't follow the ethics, you burn in hell. Fine. But it's a good way to get people to follow the ethics. <laughs> you got to give them some reason to follow the ethics. That's the point. That's the point. That's what Christianity noticed that you didn't. Tell people, yeah, don't steal and, you know, don't be selfish and be humble. And they say, why? <laughs> why? What do, that doesn't sound very fun to me. I'd rather drink and start fights and have sex. F you. <laughs> and you've got to give them a really good answer. You say, oh, you're going to burn in hell if you do. Okay, now, now they can think about it. All right, maybe, maybe I don't want to go to hell. So you see what I'm getting at? See what I'm getting at? It's not some mysterious coincidence that religion is formed the way it forms. It's not some mysterious coincidence that Christianity was as successful as it was. It provides something really, really important and essential in human beings. That's what Peterson is arguing. That's why he bristles at the idea of getting rid of religion. He's like, ah, I see chaos if you do it. It's what Nietzsche pro prophesied, chaos. Anyways, that's all for now. Just something to think about. Just something to think about. Don't need to, don't need to get all excited. Just some food for thought. All right. Amen.